Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. I'm gonna show you how to install System Platform R6. Pretty cool, huh? But one thing I want you guys to know about is pause points. They're not points you win a game or win some kind of prize, but what they are is allow you to just make sure you can pause anywhere in the video if you need to go back and listen to what I was talking about because I do talk relatively fast because I wanna get through the video because uh, I don't want you to have to sit here for hours on end, but I do want you to learn. Okay, so here's some things that you're going to need to install System Platform. Uh, obviously, you're going to need a server, but you're also going to need System Platform R6 ISO. You can get this from Support's website. Uh, you can get it from somebody you know, that kind of thing. But essentially, you just get the ISO. It's downloadable, or you can get it from your, uh, your Avaya person. You're also going to need PuTTY. You need SSH and Telnet access to the server. Uh, whether it's an S8300, which I have here, or a S8800 type server that you're going to load this on. You're also going to need an internet browser. This allows you to manage system platform to install the templates as well as upgrade system platform itself. All right, so as I was talking about, here it is on support's website. I'll have this link in the description, but this is actually the link to Communication Manager 6.3 software, which has a link to all of the system platform uh, images for VMware, as well as any of the, uh, the upgrade ISO, as well as the full installation of 6.3.0.3 for system platform. So again, I'll have this link in the description. Make sure you have access to support's website um, to get those ISOs. All right, so I'm using a basic DVD, CD burner, writer thingy, the USB powered. Uh, again, this is a Memorex. I think I bought it Best Buy for like 30 bucks. Um, and I plug it into the USB port of the S8300D, that is your requirement, and I also have a link to the compatibility matrix for R6 for system platform in there, right? So as soon as I plug that in, pop that in, it's ready to go. Uh, make sure you, just kind of a good practice, power off the server and then turn it back on, uh, specifically with the S8300. Um, I've seen some issues with that, but just plug it in, power it up, and uh, it'll 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 mount that CD-ROM for you. You can you can get into the Linux and mount it yourself. But you also want to plug into the services port, and I'm going to show you how to configure that right here. All right. So set your network communication. This is on a Windows 8 box. Uh, this also works for Windows 7. I won't talk about Windows XP because it's no longer around. <laughs> well, it's around but no longer supported. Anyway. Your IP address, 192.11.13.5. Your subnet mask is a .252. Uh, this essentially gives you two hosts on this subnet, which is .5 and .6. Uh, .6 is the server of your services port, and .5 is your machine, okay? That could be a good pause point if you need to go back. All right, cool. Uh, once you have it configured, your server's powered up, make sure you start pinging it. Uh, once you start pinging it, and you know it's responding to pings, you know the network interface has come up, the base application of the <coughs> of the server itself has come up to be able to mount the drives uh, so you can actually start the installation. Okay, This is where PuTTY comes into play while we're waiting for that to come up. This is where you want to type the address of 192.11.13.6, and you want to select Telnet, which automatically changes your port, and then you want to go set your translation, which is UTF-8. This is what you want to select to start the installation of System Platform R6 on an S8300D. Uh, um, I know there's this, there's ways to do this with your service support as well as with um, uh, doing it on on the server side. But on the server side, if you just drop a CD or you drop the ISO CD that you burned, DVD that you burned into the drive itself hook a monitor and keyboard up to it, you can run the same thing that I'm about to show you uh, on that server, okay? But this is the S8300, again, kind of translates the same way to the other ones. All right, see, that's pinging now. The server's responding to us, so we want to start the installation of System Platform. So here we go. I click on Open, and there's the beginning window. I'm going to zoom into this for a second so you can actually see the details. Um, but the first thing that comes up, it asks you what your keyboard type is. Okay, so select what your keyboard type is and hit space. Now take note, tab, alt tab, changes you between all the elements and your space bar selects the elements. Uh, I'm gonna skip the testing of the CD media uh, because it takes a while, but if you haven't tested your media, it's a good idea to do that, all right? But I'm gonna skip it here for time's sake, but just make sure you test your media before you do any of your installations, okay? Good best practice. So, moving on. Uh, one thing that you need to note about System Platform, it is your base 
platform. It is the platform that everything else sits on. Get the name. <laughs> All right. That's where you're going to install communication manager. It's where you can install system manager. Um, other applications that are out there that can use system or a system platform. Uh, th like I said, this is your base platform to run those applications. Uh, part of this series, I'm going to show you how to install communication manager. Take note. I can install System Platform, Communication Manager in under an hour uh, from any kind of server. So it's an 8800, it's an 8300, it doesn't matter. I've done it hundreds of times. My point is, because I've done it hundreds of times, I, I can tell you how easy it is. It's, it's much, much easier than 5.2 in prior days. This is the much, much easier way to do it. In fact, that's why I'm trying to promote it, trying to get you guys familiar and get you up to speed with R6 because it is, it's very easy. It's really easy to use. It's easy to understand. Okay. So here we are on the system domain, helpful tip, make sure you have about 10 available IP addresses for you to install system platform, communication manager, or anything else you may, may have. So it's just good to say, Hey, I need 10 IP addresses. So you have some to play with. All right. We're going to give it a host name. This host name is the system domain itself. You will not be logging into this. Uh, from a customer base level or even install installer base. This is just to have the base pl the base base platform of system platform. There's a lot of platforms in there <laughs> uh, running. Okay, so I set my DNS. Uh, DNS is very important, especially for time servers. If you're going to use domain names, especially with your host names, if it's accessible via your internal network. Obviously, I'm connecting to everything via IP addresses. I meant to put 220 here, but you'll see the error that comes up later. Uh, yeah, yeah, I meant that. I did. I wanted you to see the error. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're also going to set the default gateway, subnet mask, and we're going to enable IP forwarding. The importance of IP forwarding is if you're connected to the services port, it allows you to get to the other uh, entities of system platform, specifically the web console and any of the virtual uh, virtual machines that you install. It's kind of neat because that's kind of your back door if you don't know the network information if you're helping a customer let's say okay but here's the sp console domain this is the web console uh, this is sp dom as it says right there and this is the ip address that you're actually going to access via your internet browser as i'll show you when we're done installing this okay so once you have that you select okay and then here's services this is new in the newer R, I believe it came out in R6.2. Don't quote me, I have to look it up. Um, but it's the newer, this came out in the newer versions of R6.x, whatever, uh, to have Avaya services access your system. If you have a SAL server, disable this, okay? Um, so if you have a separate SAL server, you wanna disable this, okay? That's all I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> Cause it sits there in, in a stop mode anyway, but if you don't have a SAL server, go ahead and load this because it's not going to hurt anything. And it's nice to have if you ever need anybody to have access. But you notice I'm putting the IP address that I did earlier. It'll check and tell you, nope, that's not going to happen. And it, you, you put the right IP address in, which I just did here. Yeah, I wanted to show you that error. <laughs> and you continue on. This is where it asks you for your time zone. I haven't sped any of this up yet, guys. Okay, keep that note. This is really fast. Um, the NTP, this is where you put your nine, your network time protocol servers in. Obviously I'm putting time.windows.com in here. You can put an IP address in there if you want, which if you don't have DNS, you want to put an IP address in there. You make sure you put a working NTP server in here because if you have to change it afterwards, once you're in the web console, you have to reboot your server. Just keep that as a, as a friendly note that if you're going to change them later, there you go. Speaking of changing, I highly recommend you do not change these these passwords. There's some issues. I'll actually find the link for it on a uh, on a service notice about changing these passwords because if you change them, LDAP can get all screwed up and lock up, and you got to have a VIA get in and fix it. Uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't. But anyway, just to be safe, don't change these passwords. All the passwords are like root zero one, admin zero one, cust zero one, so you know. But we'll come back to that when I log into the. Uh, and then the domain itself, all right? So here's where it's gonna format the file system. Basically, it's formatting the hard drive on the uh, on the server, getting it ready for all of your files that you're gonna be installing. And template, think of templates like your images in VM world, in virtualization world. So the templates are like communication manager, system manager, things like that, all right? So keep that in mind that templates like images and your system platform is like your VM server, all right? But we won't talk, we won't use the VM talk jargon all that much. 
we're going to focus on system platform and templates okay so this is where it's going to transfer the install to the to the hard drive and again i haven't sped any of this up yet i'm going to speed up the part where it's actually doing the install because that takes about 10 12 15 minutes uh but so far i haven't sped anything up and we're 10 minutes into the video and you know again that's how long it takes to install system platform to this point all right so just keep that in mind uh, as I continue on talking about system platform, as you can see, I started, here's where I started speeding it up. As you can tell, it's going kind of fast. Um, get guys, I want you to get really familiar with system platform. I want you to get comfortable with it. Uh, just get to know that it is a good thing. Trust me. I've been working on CM for a long, long time. It is a good thing. Once it's done, it's going to close your putty session down automatically. Start pinging. As you can see, I'm doing here, and once it starts responding, system platform is up. It's ready to be accessed. As you can see, I did right here. I typed that IP address, 192.168.0.223, that I programmed, and I'm logging in with admin and admin01. That's the default password. And once I've logged in, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to bring you to the licensing terms. Now, note, you don't need a license file or any type of purchase license to install System Platform and run it because it doesn't really do much without templates, but it is a good way to get practice in, okay? Once you get load, once you get it loaded, it's the first thing it's going to do is ask, ask you to accept the license terms. Once you've accepted them, it takes you to the virtual machine management. From this area, you have three navigation tabs on the left. There's virtual machine management, which we're looking at now. Server management, which is where you can change your Ethernet, your NTP settings, your network settings, all that good stuff. And user management, okay? That's where you can change your passwords and such of your users for system platform. It doesn't change your users for other things like CM and stuff like that, although they do kind of link together. This is where that LDAP piece comes into play. Um, but just keep that note. You don't want to mess with the users in here too much. You want to leave everything as default as possible until you get extremely comfortable with system platform and know how to navigate your way around the system, both here as well as in an SSH uh, connection from PuTTY into this .223. All right. Um, when you want to start installing templates, which I'll show you later, I'm going to show you how to install uh, Communication Manager. You do that from the templates part of virtual machine management. This is also where you can see uh, where you can do patch management. That's where you handle all the patches of all your different of your system platform, your platform upgrade. This is where if you want to upgrade system platform from like R6.3 to R6.4 when it comes out or whatever, that's where you're going to do it. This is where the log viewer is, your date time configuration, any type of logging that you're going to set on this system. Um, your SAL gateway management. This is where you can set up your SAL gateways. This is where you can set up, uh, oh gosh, what else? High availability, if you want to set that up. Any of your license management, your web LM, this is where that's managed out of or where you can click to get to it. Uh, but this is where your server management is. It tells you the server type you're on, the number of cores, and the Ethernet connections and all that good stuff. Um, but that's it. Once you've installed System Platform, you're ready to go. You're ready to install all your other templates that you want to install. Specifically, if you're installing Communication Manager, that's the only one that's going to let you install, along with Utility Server, which is another cool thing I'll talk about later. Um, and that's it. Pretty simple, guys. So if you have any questions, let me know, okay? I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like. See ya.